Styling a web page is perhaps the most rewarding experience in programming, where you see a bland black and white page taking shape of a presentable entity. For some, it's the most energy draining activity as well, especially in the beginning, since the syntax and terminologies in styling world are totally different from HTML. In my opinion, one should never consider them as two separate things to learn and do. An HTML page without styling means nothing in most situations. So one should learn to create and style HTML as a single activity. I'm Ali from Learn Awesome, and in this video, I'll walk you through basic styling for a very basic web page that we created in our previous video of yet another full stack development course series. We'll build upon the created HTML document in that video, so you might want to watch it first if you haven't already. All right, let's switch to Visual Studio Code and start styling. In previous part of this video series, we created this HTML document with head, body, and a few basic ingredients. But the result is pretty bland, as you can see. So let's add some CSS styling and change that. So a little refresher is necessary that there are three types of style that can be used in HTML document, inline, internal, and external. So let's start with the internal styling. Internal styling is applied in the head section of HTML document using the style tag. So let's do it and create a style element, so style. Right, now inside the style element, we need to use a specific syntax to apply style. And that is to first specify which element we want to apply this style to, followed by the style itself in curly braces. An example would be good. So let's say I want to apply a style to the entire body element. So I'm going to type body, that is name of the element or its tag, then I open a curly brace and VS Code would add the ending brace, as you see. Now if I press Control Space in VS Code with my cursor between those curly braces, VS Code would pop up a list of all styling options available for that particular element type. Magic, right? So let's go ahead and pick, say, background color. And you would be presented with a list of background colors to choose along with a preview for each color. So I'm going to go ahead and choose black color. And voila, the entire web page turned black and disappeared. This is real magic, making the entire web page disappear with one keystroke. See, Houdini is no match for a web developer who knows styling. All right, so this is a great magic trick, but it would not be appreciated as such by users of your website. So let's bring the content back. Note the content is still there. So if I go ahead and make a selection, see the content is starting to appear in gray. So the content is there. It's just black on a black background, so not visible anymore. So let's fix it starting with the H1 heading. So again, in our style element, we would add a line for our H1 element and say we change its color to Red. If I was making a scary web page for some haunted house, I would expect a bonus in my next paycheck. Spooky or not, the heading is back. So let's continue with our necromancy spree and bring the paragraph back as well. But before that, let me explicitly say color is for foreground and background color is for background color or the canvas. So for paragraph, let's choose the get it through color and try to make it appear. So I say P, which is the tag for paragraph element. And I say color, color, get it blue. Good to see you paragraph and you look better than before. But where are your pre's and post? As you can see, they are not part of the paragraph and hence can't be styled like that using the paragraph styling. So here we are going to make explicit use of the proper term for styling the cascading style sheets. Cascading a style applied on top level element is supposed to be applied to its descendants as well. So now we know that these pre and post are children of this div element. So should we style the div? But just to make the point here, let's ignore this div and style the body element instead and specify a text color for it or text foreground color to be explicit. Let's choose a green color. 
to go with this. So I say color green. So interestingly, this not only brought back pre and post in green color, it also revived the H2 heading that we were experimenting with, this one. And this was in the body tag itself. So we can infer the following concepts from this experiment that we just did. A style applied on a top level element like body is applied on its children, grandchildren, and other later descendants. This trickle down is not applicable to descendants with their own style. Like for example, the H1 heading has its own color applied to it, which, which was red, so it is still red. While H2 heading, which did not have a style of its own defined, turned green. And again, the style applied closest to the element in question in parent hierarchy wins, starting with the style applied on itself. That would be clear in just a second. Let's turn our attention to the next style in the list of style types, that is inline style. So to do that, we are going to add another paragraph to our HTML file and try applying an inline style on it. So to do that, I would add a paragraph element. And then within the tag itself for this paragraph, I'm going to say style equal to color colon let's pick page. Why not? Right. And in this paragraph, the content can be a a page paragraph. And you would notice a page paragraph appears in the content area in page color, of course, even though our head section has an internal style defining cadet blue color for paragraph elements. But since the inline style is applied on the element itself and not on the type of element, so this is the closest thing to an element that it can get. So it would take precedence over any style applied anywhere else, including the one applied on the type or including the one applied on a top level element. I hope that is clear. We have covered inline and internal styles, but perhaps the most important one is the external style, which we are going to be creating next. So let's go ahead and let me get out of the Zen mode by pressing escape T key twice and go ahead and create a new file and I can call it my first HTML CSS.CSS. I created this CSS file in the same folder as the HTML file, as you can see. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut the contents of this style tag in HTML. cut using control X and paste them in the CSS file. Now I'm going to go ahead, file, save all. All right, we also need to get rid of this empty style element since we don't need it anymore. All right, but the web page has no styling and that is because we need to link this CSS file with my HTML page. And to do that, I'm going to use the link element in the head section. And first of all, I need to tell the purpose of this link to HTML document. And for that, we use the rel attribute. And in here, we specify style sheet as the option. So we are telling HTML that we are creating a link with the purpose of style sheet. And then we tell the location of the style sheet which can be a web page, uh, uh, some online resource, or in this case, it's a local file. So I'm going to say dot slash and select the CSS file from the pop-up, add the closing tag, and we are done. Great. All the styling came back. So you can see the styling is applied from an external file to my HTML document. And the reason external CSS is so powerful because say I create another HTML file to my website and link it to the same style sheet. All that styling is consistently applied in both HTML files.
the entire website would be based off a consistent theme or look and feel. My HTML file is cleaner as well with focus on my elements and styling has been separated. If you look at both files independently, you can focus on one thing at a time. You can go ahead and try adding a second HTML file and link it via link element to same style sheet and see the result for yourself as a take home exercise. So, so far we are just taking example of colors for our styling, but a consistent look and feel doesn't just end at colors. It involves a lot of things like font sizes, the font itself, customized headings, and a lot, lot of other CSS styling which we haven't even ventured into. So all you need to do is define, say, a standard.css file, which all your HTML file need to consume, and the look and feel would be standardized. Theming is a bit advanced topic, but you know there's a lot of movement nowadays, say, for large, light and dark themes. And if you think about it, this requires a lot of customization, like we just did for our dark theme. Having external CSS make it so easy at its most basic, all you need to do is change contents of your standard CSS file to either dark or light color schemes. And your entire website with dozens of pages would be updated instantly. Okay, this brings us to the end of this very basic introduction to CSS. We just played with colors in this one. In next video, we shall look at manipulating font sizes and have our first introduction to an amazing debugging tool that comes built in with Chrome browser to solve a mystery. Don't forget to watch as it is extremely useful knowledge. If you liked this video, please don't forget to give a thumbs up and share. In addition to our full stack playlist, you might also like to browse our channel for other series like how internet is secured, chat GPT features and prompt engineering. And as you might have guessed, we cover all emerging technologies and trends. So you can consider subscribing to the channel to be notified of upcoming content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye.